Perfect. John and Charles, and welcome back to a new series on the YouTube channel, uh, AFL Fantasy Head to Head, where we put two players head to head and who I would be picking, and if I have a special guest on, who they'd be picking. We have got a special guest to start things off. He was the man that came up with it, uh, helped me come up with the idea. So thank you um, to him very much for that. You know him from the Free Kick um, podcast with a- for AFL W Fantasy, and you also know him. He's done a few things um, with Hat Chat as well. Um, welcome to. Liam, mate, how you going? G'day, Bells. Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. And don't take too much credit. Like I, I had, I put a one sentence idea in a in a Twitter group chat, and then uh, this is what it's become. Don't don't palm too much credit off to me. Uh, that's all right. Now I got to got to shout at the people that that helped me um that helped me give some content ideas because it's always good to um see what the people the people want, and um I think that people are gonna hopefully enjoy this series. I can't say they will. So we'll, we'll see how we go. But today we've got two players going head to head. We have Josh Kelly versus Marcus Bonampelli. So two players that have been really uh, heavily spoken about in uh, people's sides start the year. So Marcus Bonampelli is 891k um, as just a pure midfielder. Same with Josh Kelly. He's just pure mid and he is currently at 899k. So only 8k difference. So who are we going to pick? That's the question. So, Liam, I'll start with you. Um, Josh Kelly. Um, you wrote the piece on the Hatcher Instagram page for Josh Kelly, so a bit of a deeper dive into him. But for anyone that maybe not haven't have read that already, which I would uh, encourage people to do that. Um, what are some things about Josh Kelly that you're looking forward to ahead of the 2022 se- 2023 season? Sorry. Well done. So I think the, the first premise you got to do is like the reason why I like players at this price is they're kind of in that range of like price at 101, 102, and you're looking for them to go only up about eight or nine points in average up to 110. So that's the first premise. He fits that. The second thing is, has he done it before? Josh Kelly is a legit AFL gun, kind of irrespective of fantasy. You want the ball in his hands. And has it was, you know, number two overall pick, rowdy, rowdy, rowdy. Like, the guy's a very good footballer. But then you also look at his fantasy scores. He has, uh, where he broke out in 2017, he took his score from a, basically an 89 up to 112, right? So that meant from then on, he's gone 112, 109, 116, 106, 104. So up until last year, he has been consistently high across that time period, high 100s up to over 110. So he hits all of those markers. Then he hit last year and he had an absolutely dud second half of the year. So before the buys, he was averaging about 106, 107, which is close to enough what I think to what I think he needs to average to be valuable this year. Then after the buys, he goes from 55% CBAs down to 35 and drops his average from 106.5 down to 96.1. So immediately 10-point drop in just dropping off, you know, like about 20% CBAs. And then in the final three games of the year, he had no CBAs. But what's even more ridiculous is that 96.1 average is hugely inflated by the fact that he scored a bulk, a, like a bunch of those points, 142 against the Western Bulldogs in the second yeah. last round of the year, basically playing off that game. game. And like, mark game, it was yeah. that, that that game was the Harry Himmelberg, Josh Kelly chip show. Like it yeah. was ridiculous how much they had the ball in their hands. So you factor all those in, and you go, okay, he can do it before. If he has the CBAs, he you can see he did it last year. Step in the next perfect situation for Jelly. Taranto is gone. Hopper is gone. Bruin is gone. All of those players had CBAs last year. Jelly also averages substantially more when those players are out of the midfielder, out of the midfield. So if uh, when Taranto is out of the side, he averages nine points per game on average more. And then he averages 12 points per game average more if Hopper isn't in the side. All of these are just factors that tell me that irrespective kind of of basically anything else, there's opportunity. We know he can do it before. And we just like, he fits perfectly into the price range where you need kind of for that, um, you know, M2, M3 spot. 
Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people are looking for that because a lot of people don't want to pay up for for your Rory Lairds, uh, Andrew Brayshaws, Clayton Oliver's those those type of guys that type that want to save a little bit more money. And but the other thing I do want to say with uh, Jelly that I really do like as well um, is that his first five games um, of the year could could arguably see him as it wouldn't be there wouldn't be a a world where people say that's impossible where Josh Kelly could be the highest scoring player after five rounds because he's got Adelaide, West Coast, Carlton, Essendon, and Hawthorne. So it's particularly the Adelaide, West Coast, and Hawthorne fixtures are going to be pretty good. Um, so this, he could average um, one fifteen plus over those first five weeks. So um, what do you what do you see him averaging um, this year? Um, I see him going at somewhere between one ten and one twelve. Yeah, yeah. I've got probably but- got him about the same as well. But I think that, and, and to kind of argue against myself, it's not like I've, I've painted this particularly rosy picture of Jelly, but it's not all good news. The problem that he does have is that he's got a new coach and with that may come some change in game plan. Um, now, Kingsley does come from Richmond, but I also think, and, and you know, he Richmond and, and Hardwick are known kind of fantasy wide for not being particularly good at fantasy scoring, even if they win games. But if you actually look at the players that Richmond have, they don't actually have particularly elite midfielders and scorers. Like their most elite players have been impact forwards, key forwards, and then their highest scorers have pretty consistently been their high-class defenders. Yeah, and your holies and your shorts, that, yeah. And so that, so that tells me that, you know, it's not necessarily that the game plan does nothing. It's more just that there haven't been the players who can accumulate in the same way. So yeah. I don't think it's necessarily true that Kingsley is just like the de- going to destroy every single player at GWS's scoring capabilities, you know, outside of Lockie Whitfield off halfback. I just think that it, it means that there's a little risk. Like it is a little bit of an unknown what he's going to bring and what that scoring is going to look like. And they're probably going to lose a few games to start the year. And most players average fewer points in losses, particularly midfielders. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very good point um, you raise there. So he's definitely um, come in and out of my side uh, throughout the preseason. And I'm sure that the, the next player that we're going to speak about as well has been in many sides, but yeah, Marcus Bonapelli, um, he's the other one in this head to head matchup. So he's, he's a gun in the competition. We all know that, but, the big thing here is is that Josh Dunkley is now not there. So with him going out of the mix, you would imagine that that sees a bump for all the doggies midfielders, but particularly Bont because also Rory Lobb has come into the side, which you'd think he's the main for he'll be one of the main forwards there. It means Bont won't have to spend as much time forward. So uh, the other stat I want to bring up as well is uh, his averages with and without Dunkley. So. When the Bont is played with Josh Dunkley in the side, he's averaged uh, 97.18 to be exact, so 97.2 with Dunkley. When Dunkley hasn't been in the side, he's averaged 118.6. So it's it's a pretty substantial jump um, of over 21 points. So that's a you're going to see value right there. And being priced at um, what was he priced at again? Um, I think he's priced at eight ninety one. Yeah, I, he's priced I, I, at that, 100.5. 100.5. Sorry, yeah. I was, I somewhere I somewhere around that mark. Yeah, 100.5, somewhere around there. So you're going to you're gonna get value, I think. But is that jump going to be the 118? I don't think it'd be 118, but it could be around that 110 mark, which is where this head-to-head debate um, with Bont and Jelly starts. But, yeah, what what are your, what are your thoughts about Bont um, heading into season without Dunkley and Roy Lobb being uh, in the side? Yeah, I think I think part of it is uh, there is obviously the question of him playing forward. Yeah, Lob comes in, that means they need one fewer forward. Here's the reason to be a little bit concerned. He doesn't necessarily play forward because they need someone to kick goals. He plays forward because he's quite often injured. I think he might have the same problem that Patrick Cripps does. A bloke that big and that good at getting the ball going to get banged around a lot like they're big bodies and there's just a lot of body for play to get hit 
So in the last two years, a lot of the time he's spent forward has not been, oh, that's just where I'm resting. I can have all this, like, you know, super high time on ground. He's not like a midfielder that sits above 90 like, you know, Bailey Smith can do. His time on ground is there because he's injured. So I think it does come with some kind of injury risk. And so it is some reason to be concerned. I think the other question to legitimately have in the two of them is that we've seen Jelly go at 116 for an entire season, if given the right role. Now, Bond has always been in those sides with the McRae. Like, you know, McRae has always been alongside him and there's always been the better scorer. But, you know, since they've, you know, for most of the time it's been Dunkley has been in the same midfield with him and probably taken some of his points. But it, we d- we're not 100% certain he can do that 110 for an entire year in the same way that we know Jelly can. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. We haven't, he hasn't been able to crack that, um, that 110 mark for a season. So his highest average for a season was 107.9. Um, so he's got close to 110, but he hasn't been able to crack that. So is he going to have that? that jump to go 110 plus. I think it could, if there's going to be a year, it's going to be this year because from reports, he's, he's hasn't uh, had an interrupted preseason. He's 27 years of age. He's obviously in the prime of his career. He's one of the best players in the comp. So if there is a year, he is going to go 110. I think the stars have aligned that it will be this year. So, but as you mentioned, the, the injury risk um, has been there. And I think Josh Kelly um, in previous years, I think last year was one of the first years he did play, all those games well. So both these players do actually have that slight injury risk. Probably Bont a little bit more because he has been banged up more in games previously where Josh yeah. Kelly's maybe missed a game or two from an injury. So they're, they're the um, big talking points there. But in terms of who we would pick out of the two, I'll throw to you first, Liam. Who would you have out of these two in your side to pick one? I, I, I think Josh Kelly is up there for first names on my team sheet. So I think that he's a co like you know co captain, gone at one sixteen in the past. When given the CBAs, gets the role. I think he is kind of, for me, one of the players I'm hottest on for this year. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd agree. I think I, I'd pick Josh Kelly as well um, over um, him because just because I've got McRae uh, at the moment probably ahead of Bond. I just think we, as you said, we have seen McRae go multiple times over 115. He's been that main main guy in there in terms of the fantasy scoring. Whereas and we have seen Josh Kelly um has been proven with scoring over 115 as well. So I would be picking Kelly. But have have you got one or both in your side? who are you currently um uh rolling with in your team out of the two? So funnily enough, I'm actually rolling with both of them. They are my, <laughs> they are my uh, M2 and M3 at the moment uh, because I actually do believe that Bont has the upside without it, um, without him in the side and all those numbers about what Bont can do when Dunkley hasn't played, I, I think ring I think ring true. Um, yeah. I also think that, and, you know, I, I could have mentioned this earlier, I also just think that the fact that uh, they've now got Sam Darcy also to play a tall role either as a defender or as a forward, again, contributes to, we'll just keep him in the midfield for a little bit longer, let him rest off the ground and then get him back on. His points per minute have always been particularly high. Like he, I think pretty consistently his, um, his points per minute has been kind of at that one. And I, I think, I still think he can get above that this year with the role. So I've actually got both. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not bad, bad, uh, um, move to have both because uh, they're both valley plays and they both could improve on what they're priced at. I currently don't have any in my uh, either of them in my side. Josh Kelly's been the one I've been more keen on having in my side, as obviously mentioned. I picked Kelly uh, over Bond, but I think the reason I haven't got Bond um, in my side too much this preseason is because I've got McRae. I don't want McRae and Bond. I just I'm I'm unsure if I want both in. So the moment I've got McRae, but Bond is in the mix as well. And you've also got like a Bailey Smith um, from the Doggies. But yeah, Josh Kelly, I think as well with those early fixtures is is another reason why I do like having him on my side to start the year. So, but yeah, it's very interesting. But Josh Kelly uh, is is the guy that we'd pick today. So uh, we um, unanimously, unanimously agree. 
but he is the pick out of the two. So beautiful. Well, thank you very much, Liam, for jumping on um, the episode today. Really appreciate jumping on the first one. Um, for people that don't uh, already know, where can uh, they find you on Twitter and where can they find the Free Kick podcast? And when sh- uh, should we be expecting a return potentially? Well, okay, a few questions to answer. You can find me on Twitter at LMTom1. Um, and you can find the, if you look up Free Kick W podcast on Spotify, on Apple, we're kind of across everything. Um, and the t- Twitter account is Free Kick W pod. Um, at the moment, we're having a couple of conversations about our what our preseason content is going to look like. I anticipate you'll probably hear from us in the next month. If Even if it's not a full-length episode, you'll definitely be getting some content from us soon. I've seen a couple of reports about AFLW free agency in the paper in the last week or so. So things are starting to move. We'll get a new CBA soon and then we'll have a timeline and we'll, we'll kind of launch into the content from there. Yeah, beautiful. Now I'm looking forward to AFLW fantasy getting underway again. Obviously, we've got the AFL, uh, the men's coming up, but uh, I really did enjoy it last season. Yeah. So really looking forward. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you very much, Liam, for jumping on today. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. A uh, bit of a teaser for the next one. The teaser is that it'll be a couple of poor Adelaide guns uh, going head to head in the next battle. So we'll catch you then with another special guest. All right. We'll catch you later. Cheers. Thanks, pal. See you, everyone. <laughs>